بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله continuing with our journey through عمدة الفقه باب الطهارة كتاب الطهارة the book of purification of Imam Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi رحمه الله تعالى we move on inshallah with Allah's permission but before we move on I'd like to just uh, clarify a mistake I made last week I said that if the person knows that he will be able to receive water he'll be able to get to the water. But the water will only be received after the time of prayer. Then he should delay his prayer and not make tayammam so that he can use water, the, the, the asl, the proper purification. This is an opinion of some of the scholars, right? Even Imam Ibn Qudama, but it's an opinion which is such a minority opinion. So we stick to the other opinion which is no, you make tayammam in all cases, okay? If you don't have water, there's no water around you, you cannot find it, then make tayammam. So that's a retraction from my previous lesson, and I think it was around the 30 minute mark. طيب. Today we have what is known as Babul Hayd. Babul Hayd is the chapter pertaining to the rulings for the women, pertaining to their menstrual cycle, which comes monthly. So you may think a group of men sitting here, maybe no sisters upstairs, I don't know. Why is it important for us to know? Well, each one of us is one day going to be married, if not already married. Each one of us is going to have sisters or female relatives that may need to ask him a question if they cannot access a woman who is well versed in those issues. Some of you, inshallah, by Allah's permission, will go on to teach your communities. So these issues are very important for you to learn and for us to learn and for us to know. We need to teach our wives so they can go on and teach other females. If they're unable to do that, then we need to have gatherings where we can teach. Anyway, Babul Hayd, Hayd pertaining to menstruation. Okay, linguistically, it means sailan, sailan. Sailan means flowing, that which is flowing. So the Arabs, they would say, had al-wadi ida sal. Had al-wadi ida sal. So had, relating to hayd. So they would say that the valley has had if it is flowing, ida sail. Okay, so that's how they would say it linguistically. Uh, technically, technically, istilahan, it is blood that comes from the womb of a woman okay comes from the womb of the woman in a specific time okay that's the easiest definition It's blood that comes from the woman in a specific time it has characteristics i'll say the characteristics characteristics now and i'll repeat them it's aswad damun aswad it's dark blood okay leading towards dark blood thakhin it's thick thakhin okay Ra'iha kariha. It has a very bad smell. Wala yatajammad. And it doesn't clot. Okay? In its nature. So these four characteristics. And the fifth of them, yusahibuhu uh, al-alam. It comes with pain. Okay? So these are the general characteristics of hayd. Of hayd, menstru menstrual blood. There's another type of blood that we're going to touch upon, which is the blood of the mustahada. Uh, istihad. Istihada. Okay, istihada is blood which continues after the menstrual blood. It continues after the menstrual blood, okay? So it's another type of blood and it's different to the characteristics that I mentioned in that its blood is red and it's not thick, it's normal thin blood and it can, it can clot, it can clot, okay? So it's different to uh, the menstrual blood. In any case, the Imam, he says, وَيَمْنَعُ أَشْرَةُ أَشْيَاءَ this blood, when the woman has it, the monthly cycle, it prevents from her 10 things, okay? 10 things you have to count and you have to know that it prevents from her. The first of them is fi'l salah that she's not allowed to pray, okay? She shouldn't pray because in Bukhari, Aisha radiyallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, she said that the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا أَقْبَلَتِ الْحَيْدَةُ فَدَعْيَ الصَّلَاةِ when the menstruation comes to you, then leave off the salah. فَإِذَا أَدْبَرَتْ فَغْسِلِي أَنْكِ أَدَمْ وَصَلِّي And if it goes, then wash the, uh, the blood away from you, meaning make ghusl, and then go ahead and pray. So at the time of uh, menstruation, she's not allowed to what? She's not allowed to pray. And then the imam, he says, the second thing, وَوَجُوبُهَا Not is she not supposed to pray, it's not even obligatory on her to pray. What does it mean? What's the difference between him saying, that she shouldn't pray and nor is it obligatory on her to pray. Why do you think he said that? 
she's not even required to make it up, right? Because in the hadith of Mu'adha in Sahih Muslim, Mu'adha, she came to Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked her, she said, Ma balul ha'id taqdi sawm wa la taqdi salah. She said, what is the situation of the ha'id, meaning the menstruating woman, that she makes up this fasting, but she doesn't make up the prayers? So our mother Aisha said, Ahururiya tun anti. Are you from those people who are from Hururiya, meaning the Khawarij, a deviant sect? She said, no, let's do be Hururiya tin wa lakinni asal. She said, I'm not from them, but I'm just asking. She said, Kana yusibuna dhalik. She said that used to happen to us in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. We would be menstruating and we were commanded to make up the fasting and not to make up the prayers. Make up the fasting, not make up the prayers. So a woman in her menstruating, what's the maximum? Let's say she menstruates for 10 days, right? How many fasts would she have to make up? 10. How many prayers would she have to make up if she had to make up salah? 50, right? So you see the mercy of Allah in the Sharia always. Whenever you look at any chapter of fiqh, you see that Allah is showing his mercy through that. Every act of worship, there's mercy. There's ways out, ease, if there's some kind of difficulty. And Allah always chooses the easy option for the believers. So we should remember that when the people are attacking the Sharia. We know the reality of the Sharia, that it's full of benefit and it's full of ease. Tayyip, so she's not supposed to make it up. She's not supposed to pray, she's not supposed to make it up. And she's not supposed to fast as mentioned in the same hadith of Mu'adha. And she's not supposed to make tawaf because in the hadith in Bukhari Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was on her way to Hajj, okay, uh, some time after they had left Mecca, uh, the menstruation came upon her. So she said, دَخَلَ عَلَيَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَأَنَا أَبْكِي she said, the Prophet ﷺ entered upon me and I was crying. Why was she crying? Because now she thought she cannot do the Hajj, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Anafisti, have you experienced menstruation? He used a different word. He didn't say the menstruation word. He said, Anafisti. It means the same thing in this context. Anafisti, Nifas. She said, yes. He said, Hada shay'un katabahullahu ala banati Adam. He said, this is something that Allah has prescribed upon the daughters of Adam. Don't freak out. Don't get so upset over it. If Ali ma yaf'alul hajj, ghayr alla tatufi bi bayt hatta tathuri. Do what the rest of the people are doing from the rites of hajj, except don't make tawaf upon the Kaaba until you become pure. Okay? So the Prophet ﷺ said that you cannot make tawaf in the state of menstruation, but you can do the rest of the rites like the rest of the pilgrims do. A side point from this hadith is that it proves that the one who is menstruating, she can make dhikr, even if the dhikr is from verses of the Qur'an. Okay, because Safa al-Marwa, you have verses of the Qur'an that you recite. So that's a side point. That Though later on we're going to say she can't recite Qur'an, she can recite Qur'an if it's in the form of dhikr. Okay, not in the form of recitation of the Qur'an. That's a side point from the hadith. The fiqh councils of uh, Al-Majma Al-Fiqhiyya and the Lajna al daima so the World Council of Fiqh, uh, which generally used to congregates in Mecca, and you have the Lajna al daima which is the committee of uh, fiqh and fatawa in Saudi Arabia. They dealt with the question that can a woman take pills to prevent her menstruation from coming because she wants to go hajj or she wants to go uh, she wants to fast what do you what do you think they said permitted with the permission of the husband and to ensure that it doesn't harm you okay so speaking to a female doctor of anything of that sort this is what the woman has to ensure the next thing that imam mentions what is this number four and five right وَقِرَاءَةُ الْقُرْآنِ وَمَسْحُ الْمُصْحَفِ to read the quran and to touch the quran so there's one, both are uh, not allowed, according to our Imam, and in fact, the majority of the ulama. Now, many women, when they read this, they kind of have a panic, and they start looking for makhraj, they look for exit. They want the other fatawa, which allow them to read the Qur'an. I'm not saying those fatawa are wrong, okay? But what I'm saying is the majority of the ulama, the jumhur, they say no reading of the Qur'an when you are ha'id, and no touching of the mushaf. So she has no need to panic, because there are things that she can do. For example, she's allowed to put on gloves or to put some kind of covering and to open up the Qur'an and to look at the Qur'an. So she can read the Qur'an with her eyes and her mind, right? So she still gets reward that way and she st can still revise the Qur'an that way. 
She can listen to the Quran. And we know that listening to the Quran is like reading the Quran in terms of its reward if you are uh, attentively listening, right? She can read the Quran without moving her lips like this. You know, you can actually do that. It's not, of course, the same as reading the Quran, but she can do these things to allow her to benefit from the Quran in the absence of that time where she cannot read the Quran. Imam Malik in his Muwatta, in his Muwatta, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he collects a narration that the Prophet Sallallahu sent a letter to Amr ibn Hazm, or Hazm. And in that letter, the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يمس القرآن إلا طاهر That none should touch the Quran except the one who is pure. And Imam Ibn Abd al-Bar al-Maliki, the famous Hadith scholar, he said that this, you know, is so well known amongst the ulama of Hadith that it doesn't even need a chain of narration. Okay? That this Hadith, this letter is so well known to the scholars of Hadith. It's something which is well established. So in it, what did he say, the Prophet Sallallahu that none should touch the Quran except for the one who is pure. Pure from Hadith al-Asghar and Hadith al-Akbar. And in Surah al-Waqi'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يمسه إلا المطهرون تنزيل من رب العالمين None should touch it except for those who are pure, a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah al-Waqi'ah. So what is the wajhu dalala in this verse? Wajhu dalala, if you remember, means what is the point of evidence? How do we extract the evidence and understand the evidence from this verse? What is the wajhu dalala where Allah says, لا يمسه إلا المطهرون None should touch it except for the pure تنزيل من رب العالمين Revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yes the part, of, the part about tahara, exactly But people say this tahara is referring to the angels, the malaika And it's referring to the loh al Okay But the wajhu dalala from this is like the brother said It's pertaining to tahara Are the angels not pure? So there's no point in Allah mentioning that none If it was for the Lawh al then there was no benefit of Allah saying that none should touch it except for the ones who are pure because the angels are already pure. And if they're the ones who are touching that Quran, then there's of no benefit. Secondly, Allah mentions Tanzil. He mentions that it's revelation which is being sent down, which means that it's the Mus'haf that we have between our hands according to this interpretation and this opinion. And thirdly, they say it mentions it means, like the brother mentioned, that you should be pure from Hadith al-Asghar and Hadith al-Akbar, right? So it's a clear evidence to the majority. In Bukhari and Muslim, it's narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi it says, Nahana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or Naha Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Yusafir bil Quran ila ard al adu to show you how important it is, the protection of the purity of the Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith in Bukhari Muslim used to forbade the companions or anybody from traveling with the Qur'an to the land of the enemies, where it was likely that the enemies would get their hands onto the Qur'an and touch it. Because you know the kafir is not allowed to touch the Qur'an, one who is impure, right? So this shows you how much in Islam the purity of the Qur'an means uh, to us, okay? So this is the opinion of the majority that we should not touch the Qur'an if you're in a state of Janaba, in a state of Hayd, or in a state of Hadith Al-Akbar or Asghar. Uh, with regards to, as mentioned by Sheikh Hamad Al-Hamad in his explanation of Zad Al-Mustaqna, what, what's the situation with regards to books of fiqh or books of tafsir? They both have Qur'an in them. What's the ruling there for the one who's Hayd? They're not considered as Mus'haf. Why? Because Mus'haf is from cover to cover, Arabic Qur'an, okay? And it can accept some footnotes on the sides of the pages, but that will still be considered Qur'an because it's minimal and it's in Arabic. Tayyip. So books of tafsir um, can be looked at, books of fiqh, etc. can be looked at also. The Imam, he says next, وَلُبْثْ فِي masjid. Also forbidden upon the woman is that she stays in the masjid. In Sahil Muslim, we have the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ya Aisha, nawilini a thawb or Aisha, give me a thawb. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the masjid, Aisha was in the house. Okay, which as you know was attached to the masjid. Nawilini a thawb, give me the thawb. So Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said Ya Rasulullah, inni ha'ith. O Prophet of Allah, I'm menstruating. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna haydataki laysa fi yadiki. Verily your hayd is not in your hand. Meaning you could stretch out your hand and pass me the, uh, the thobe that I was asking for, right? So where is the wajhu dalala in this hadith that the woman should not stay in the masjid? 
وَجْهُ الدُّلَالَ mean the point of evidence, the point of extraction of evidence. So this is the point. Aisha radiallahu anh mentioned and she understood the ruling which was that the woman should not go into the masjid. That's why she mentioned it. And the Prophet sallallahu didn't correct her on that. But he said to her, it's not in your hand. You can use your hand to pass it to me. Okay, so that's the وَجْهُ الدُّلَالَ uh, to, for the, the fact that the woman cannot uh, stay in the masjid. The next thing that Imam he mentions before I move on to that, some of the um, scholars of today who explain this book, uh, like uh, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Jibreen, Hafidullah, he said that if the woman is sure that nothing will come from her that will pollute the place, and she wants to attend lectures wherein she is studying, okay, in the masjid, she, according to him and those who agree with him, can do so if she is sure that nothing uh, will pollute the place in the masjid. That's a side point. Our Imam and the majority, they say no. al fil farj The next is to have intercourse in the correct manner, the full intercourse, right? Because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاعْتَزِلُوا النِّسَا فِي الْمَحِيدُ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَتْحُرْنَا فَإِذَا تَطَحَرْنَا فَأْتُهُنَّ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَمَّلَكُمُ اللَّهِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, avoid the women in the situation of menstruation. And only approach them once they have been purified, meaning once, they, uh, once their menstruation has finished and once they have made ghusl. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith in, uh, collected by Ahmad, Abi Dawood, and Nisa'i, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ata imra'atahu wa hiya ha'id, falyatasaddaq bi dinar aw nisfi dinar aw nisfihi. So there's a kafara for the one who does this act whilst his wife is on menstruation. Kafara meaning expiation that he has to pay. Okay, so he's sinful, he has to make tawbah if he does that, and he has to pay a kafara according to this narration of the hadith. What is the kafara? He has to pay one dinar or half a dinar. In Tirmidhi, Ibn Abbas anhu gives his opinion on this statement of the Prophet He said, إِذَا كَانَ دَمًا أَحْمَرْ dinar. If it's reddish blood, what he means by reddish blood, he means that if it's the early stages of the menstruation, then the person should pay one dinar. But if it's the later stage where the dam is not of that color, then he should pay half a dinar. Tayyib. Uh, Sheikh Hamad al Hamad, in his explanation of Zad al Mustaqni, he mentions that it's a mashhur opinion in the madhab, it's a, a popular opinion in the madhab, that it, if the woman has finished her menstruation, she's finished the menstruation, but she didn't make ghusl, and the person has relationship with her, then there's no kafar upon him in that situation, but he still has to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so the two situations are different. Tayyip? Apart from this situation of being uh, not allowing to have relationships in the manner that we understand when the person is married, then the person can do anything else that he wants with his wife, though she is menstruating. Why? In the hadith in Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, she mentions, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمرني أن التزر وأن حائد ثم يباشرني that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to command me and التزر that I would put the izar, a tight wrap around myself, the lower part of my body, ثم يباشرني and then he would go ahead and touch me. So according to this uh, Hadith, clearly a man can go ahead and enjoy his wife as long as he doesn't fear that he would uh, go beyond what he's allowed to go beyond. The next thing that the Imam mentions, where are we now? Which number? Eight, huh? roughly. And the next thing that is not allowed for the person to do whilst the woman is in a state of menstruation or for the women to even do, but this is more to do with the man, Sunnah Tutalaq. Look at the wording of the Imam here. He said, Sunnah Talaq, Sunnah divorce. He didn't just say divorce. Okay, you'll come to understand why. He says, Sunnah Talaq. Why? Because the Sunnah way of divorcing the woman is that she has to be pure from menstrual cycle. And there should be no cohabitation, physical cohabitation of the man and the woman in that period where he wants to divorce the wife. Okay? So if he divorces his wife when she is in menstruation, then it's not sunnah talaq. It's talaq bid'i. What they call talaq bid'i. It's an innovative talaq. Okay? So he hasn't done it the sunnah way. He's done it the innovative way. Which means that the talaq is still valid. He's sinful, right, for doing what he's doing. 
But the talaq is still valid, it's still applicable. The divorce is still applicable. But the sunnah way of doing it is while she's not in menstruation. This way of doing it while she's in menstruation is talaq bid'i. It's innovated, but the application of the divorce still takes place, okay? So the person has to make tawbah from doing that if he did it. Wali'atidad bil ashur. The next thing is i'tidad bil ashur, okay? Meaning, if the woman, if she is divorced, right, then her divorce period is not three months. If the woman doesn't have menstruation, her divorce period is by the months. But a woman who reaches menstruation, her divorce period is thalatat qurru'. And qurru', many of the ulama, they say it's menstrual cycles. So she doesn't make i'tidad bil ashur. She doesn't count the months as being her idda period. She counts the three menstrual cycles as being her idda period, okay? So she doesn't look at the months, she looks at the menstrual cycles. وَيُوجِبُ al The Imam says, an obligatory upon her is ghusl. At the beginning or at the end? At the end, ahsant. At the end of the Hayd, right? And don't come close to them until they make ghusl. And also, until they make ghusl. And also the Imam, he says, what's obligatory upon her now? So the first thing he mentioned, what's obligatory upon her? After mentioning the 10 things which she has to avoid, okay, what she cannot do is that she has to make ghusl. Then he mentions that bulug, she reaches the age now of puberty because she's menstruated. Menstruation is a sign of puberty. What are the other signs of puberty? Wet dreams. If she has a wet dream, very good, ahsant. Anything else? Age, which is 15 years. Anything else? Pubic hair. That's it. Tayyib. So menstruation is from them, right? But this one is specific to the women. The other is the puberty. Uh, the other is the, the, the wet dream or the excretion of um, sperm. And uh, the coming about of the pubic hair or reaching the age of 15, right? So whichever one comes first. Tayyib. The Imam, he says, وَلِعْتِدَادْ bihi," Meaning, again, a, a repetition that the months are not used for her, for her period in divorce, rather the, the three period cycles are used. So the Imam he says, When the blood stops, then it's permissible for her now to be divorced and it's permissible for her to fast. What he means here is that before she even makes ghusl, as soon as the blood has stopped, it's permissible for her to be divorced. If her husband hates her that much, he can't wait. May Allah not make any of us from that type of person. Or she can fast, meaning that she has become pure, not ghusl, meaning her blood has stopped, and it's before the time of fajr has come about, she can go ahead and fast. Because in Sahih Muslim, the hadith says, كَانَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُسْبِحُ جُنَبًا مِنْ غَيْرِ حُلْمٍ ثُمَّ يُصُومٍ that the Prophet ﷺ used to wake up in a state of janaba, and it used to be due to having relationships, not from wet dream, and then he would go ahead and he would fast. It's meaning like the, the junab and the, the ha'id, the menstru, menstruating person, they share the same ruling in the hadith al-akbar, which is that when it comes to fasting, they don't have to have ghusl to enable them to be able to fast. Okay, This is what the Imam is saying. وَلَمْ يُبَحْ and anything else from her is not allowed until she makes ghusl, meaning any of the other prohibitions apart from the talaq and the fasting is not allowed until she makes ghusl. The Imam he says, It's permissible, it's a permissible for the man to enjoy his wife while she's in a state of menstruation, as we mentioned, passing. Okay? Bima dun al farj from everything other than the private parts, okay? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that the Imam he quotes, which is found in Sahih Muslim, Liqawli Rasulullah ﷺ, if alu kulla shayin ghayra nikah, do everything you want apart from the nikah. The nikah here mean, doesn't mean the marriage of nikah, it means the actual act that married people are allowed to do. The other three madhahib, they do not allow for the person to touch his wife between the surah wa rukba, between the belly button and the uh, knees. They say anything apart from the, anything beyond the belly button, the knees is okay. 
But our madhab, the madhab of the Hanbali scholars, the madhab of Imam ibn Qudama, they said anything apart from the actual place itself. So now everybody wants to become Hanbali, right? Because it's easier for them. In any case, did you understand the mas'ala? So the Imam is saying you can enjoy your wife apart from the actual act itself. The Imam, he says, The least of hayd is a day and a night. So if a woman has hayd for 23 hours, what do we say to her? If a woman bleeds for 23 hours, let me use the correct wording. If the woman bleeds for 23 hours, what do we say to her? We say to her, you have to make up the fast you missed and you have to, if she's going to make that up anyway, you have to make up the prayers that you missed because you're not considered as ha'id. You're not considered as being one who's menstruating because the rule here, according to the imam, is that, and the majority, is that it has to be a day and a night. This is the opinion of, of the Hanbali scholars and the Shafi'i scholars. So anything under that is considered dam istihada, blood of istihada. Istihada was that second type of blood that I mentioned to you. The one which is not menstrual blood, but it comes with the menstrual blood. Okay, it continues with it. Okay, you would consider it to be dam istihada or dam fasad. Dam which is wrong, basically, in a simple explanation. Where did they get this understanding from that the hayd, its least, is a day or a night? There's no clear evidence in the Sharia to say that, but what they say in the absence of evidence, you go to what, what I've said many times in the past, you go to al ada al ada the customs of the people. al ada muhakkama, as we said, that the, in the absence of definition of the Sharia, you go to the customs and the norms of the people. And they say it's customarily and normally a woman's Menstruation is never below a day and a night. This is what they customarily say, okay? Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he holds the other opinion. He says, no, whenever it has the definition, whenever it has the characteristics of hayd, darkness of blood, thickness of blood, comes with pain and smell, very good, okay? If it has these characteristics, consider it hayd, even if it only came for one hour. This is the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, but the majority, they go with the opinion of our Imam, the majority meaning exactly the Hanbali and the Shafi scholars. وَأَكْثَرُهُ خَمْسَةَ عَشْرَ يَوْمًا And the most of this Hayd is 15 days. The longest period of Hayd is 15 days. So if a woman sees blood after 15 days, what do we say to her? We say this is Damul Istihada, this is the Dam, not of Hayd. This is not the blood of Hayd, not the blood of menstruation. Now after 15 days, if you continue bleeding, you have dam istihada, blood of istihada, which is that other type of blood. It has its own set of rulings, right? It's dam istihada. So this is the dam, like I said, which continues after the period of hayd. And the woman, what she's supposed to do, she's supposed to wash her private part, wrap it up to the best of her ability with what she can use. Today they have something known as tampon and some towels which are used. And then she goes ahead after making wudu and prays and does whatever she needs to do from reading the Quran, etc. Okay? She goes ahead and prays. But every salah, she needs to renew her wudu if she has that type of blood and keep herself clean in that area. Okay? This is the dam istihada, the mustahada. So again, we said that it has to be a day and a night, and we said that the most of it is 15 days. Tayyib? The Imam he says, al tuhr bain al the least of purity between the two hayd, the two menstruation cycles, has to be 13 days. So she menstruates in this part of the month and she menstruates in that part of the month. What has to be between the two? 13 days. So what that means is, as mentioned by uh, Sheikh Mushayqih in his explanation of Umdat al-Fiqh and others, they said, for example, if the woman she has hayd for 10 days, mathalan. She has hayd for 10 days, right? Then she's pure for 10 days. Stay with me. Salman, hayd for 10 days. Then she's pure for 10 days. Then she has hayd for six days. What do we say about the second hayd period? Huh? It's not menstruation. All of it or some of it? First three days. Because she was pure for how long? 10. She has to be pure according to our madhab? 13 days, right? So this is uh, something to bear in mind. One of the masail which come from this point that the Imam is mentioning, and there's many other masail, but we're not going to confuse ourselves. And the Imam says, "Wala had li There's no 
end point for menstruation, for, uh, for purity. There's no end point for purity. So he said the, the, the minimum is 13 days, and there's no end point for purity, meaning there's no, there's no fixed maximum length, okay? Meaning that some women will never be impure. They will always remain pure. They won't have another hayd, okay? Or they don't experience hayd. That's what he means by this statement. Tayyib. The Imam he says, وَأَقَلُّ سِنْ تَحِيدُ لَهُ الْمَرْأَةُ تِسْعَ سِنِينَ وَأَكْتَرُهُ سِتُونَ The least time when a woman is considered to be able to have menstruation is nine years old. And the most is 60. Beyond 60, not menstruation. Below nine, not menstruation. Though the mashhur opinion in the madhab, the popular opinion in the Hanbali madhab is 50. Okay, but here our Imam is saying 60. طيب. So anything be, before nine, Say so it's not menstruation. Anything after 60, according to this opinion, we, and it's the majority, we say not uh, if it's after 60 or 50, depending upon which you take. So the Imam now, he's going to give us the first category of a person who experiences menstruation, and there are three categories. The first of them, he says, al mubtada'a. al mubtada'a too is the one, okay, not who starts bid'ah, not this... Uh, Al Mubtada'a too is the one from uh, the one who begins. That's what it means. She's, she begins now her menstruation, the first time ever. So the one who experiences it for the first time, what does she do? The Imam he says, fi mithlihi jalasat. If she finds blood in the time that it's normally found, meaning after nine years old and before sixty years old. Then jalasat, then she sits. What does it mean she sits? Sits, hear me, is a metaphor. Kinaya, it's a metaphor, meaning that she sits away from those acts of worship that we said that she cannot do, okay? She sits away and doesn't do those acts of worship that we said that she cannot do. And if this blood stops before the completion of a day and a night, then it's not considered what? is not considered hayd. Okay? Why? Because we said that the Imam is telling us the minimum is a day and a night. So if she, for her first time, if it stops less than a day and a night, we say it's not hayd, it's not menstruation. You have to make up the prayers that you missed and you have to make up the uh, fasting that you missed, which she would do anyway, even if she's uh, menstruating. Tayyib. وَإِنْ جَاوَزَ ذَلِكْ وَلَمْ يَعْبُرْ أَكْتْرَ الْحَيْدِ فَهُوَ حيد. And if it goes beyond that, meaning beyond the day and the night, and it doesn't go beyond the maximum amount of menstruation, then it's considered hayd, then it's considered menstruation. What is the maximum amount of menstruation? Very good, 15 days, ahsant. Very good, okay? So it shouldn't go beyond the maximum amount of menstruation, which is 15 days. فَإِذَا تَكَرَّرَ ثَلَاثَةَ أَشْهُرْ بِمَعْنَى وَاحِدْ صَارَ آدَى So this mubtada, al mubtadaatu. If she has hayd now for three times, meaning one month has passed, the second month has passed, the third month has passed, right? And she has a fixed period now. Now she goes to that person, being, is the second category, known as being the one who has ada. Ada is the woman who now has a fixed period. It's above and a day and a night, and it's less than 15 days, okay? And it's the same... Uh, time amount and it comes in the same period of the month okay this is the woman who's now considered as being ada okay mu'tada she has an ada she has a she has a habitual menstruation okay now if the days for this woman who has an ada meaning to say that it comes every month but it differs in the amount of days first month is five days second month is six days so third month is seven days. What does this woman do in this situation? Anybody know? First month is five days. Second month is six days. Third month it's seven days. Average, close. Sheikh Bajabir, Bajabir, Hafidahullah, in his explanation of this book, Umdat al Fiqh, he said, What is the common factor in these months? What is the common denominator here? It's five, isn't it? So she goes with five as being her period. First was five, second was six, third was seventh. Okay? So she goes with five as being her common denominator in this situation. 
Tayyib, with me so far? Going back, if I can, just to confuse you a little bit, going back because I missed a mas'ala I wanted to mention, where we said that أَقَلَ الْحَيْءَ tuhr بَيْنَ حَيْدَتَيْنَ ثَلَاثَةَ عَشْرَ يَوْمًا That the least purity between the two menstruation cycles is 13 days, right? Is 13 days. How many times then can a woman have period in the month? I'm saying to you that the least purity between the two cycles has to be 13 days. Then how many times can a woman have menstruation in a month? Three times, right? Islamic month, 29 and 30 days, right? So what she can have menstruation from one day, then pure for 13 days, that's 14. Have another menstruation for one day and night, right? That makes how many days? 15 days. Then again, 13 days purity, 28. And then she has one more menstruation. Okay, this is important because it, it, it comes in other uh, aspects of fiqh. Tayyib. So I got to the point where I was speaking about the mu'tada. And just to let you know, because I know you guys are finding it difficult, I'm finding it difficult, difficult explaining it. Imam Ahmed, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah, right? It's narrated about him that in some of these masail of fiqh, he didn't get it until 20 years. 20 years, this is Imam Ahmed. Some of these masail can be so deep, and we're not going to touch them, of course. We're sticking at the level which we're supposed to be at, which is a beginner's text, and just going slightly above. So don't worry if you find it difficult. It needs a lot of repetition. It needs for you to read around the topic. It needs for you to review. Okay? Tayyib. So the Imam, he said that if the woman, she has the, 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 the cycle for three months, then she's known as Mu'tada, Ada. She has now a customary uh, menstruation. She has a fixed menstruation. Okay? The majority of the ulama, they say once is enough. Meaning it doesn't have to be three months to equate now that she is mu'tada. They say once is enough, okay? And in a situation now, in a situation now where her cycle changes, like if her cycle changes now from five to six and then uh, it stays at six, what she has to do, her period was five, right? But now it's changed to six in the fourth month. Her, for three months it was five. But in the fourth month it's changed to six. So in the fourth month now, she stays at five. And the sixth day, she considers it istihada, right? She considers it that extra blood, not the blood of menstruation. And in the fifth month, if it goes to six also, she considers that extra day also istihada. But when it goes to the seventh month, then that now becomes her new customary habit, her new ada. So in essence, for it to become an ada, it has to be three months according to the opinion of our imam, right? And anything which changes, until it settles for three months, anything above her normal ada, her normal uh, period, is considered extra blood. It's considered dam istihada, the second type of blood, which she only needs to make wudu for it and wash it off. Tayyib. When abara the imam, he says, and if it goes beyond that, when abara fazaidu al istihada. If it goes beyond 15 days, the imam is saying, then the extra is what? Uh, istihada, dam istihada. Is that se second type of blood, right? And she should make ghusl at the end of her hayd, not at the end of the istihada. So we're talking about now the one who's the, after her period, blood keeps coming, right? According to the opinion of our imam and the majority, the blood that keeps coming after the period which is fixed, this is dam istihada or dam al fasad as they call it. That's the extra blood. For this extra blood, because the hayd has now finished, she needs to make ghusl because the hayd is finished. But the extra blood, make wudu after cleaning yourself, protecting yourself, and go ahead and pray. Where is the proof that she needs to make ghusl? In the hadith in Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, she came to the Prophet sallallahu and she said, Ya Rasulullah, inni ustahadu fala athhur. Yani I'm suffering from, uh, from blood and it doesn't stop. It just continues with me goes to the month after the next month, right? Should I leave alone praying? Because I'm now in this situation. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا, إن ذلك إرق. He said, no, rather that is due to a vein that this is happening, right? لكن دعي الصلاة قد الأيام التي كنت تحيدين فيها ثم اغتسلي وصلي. Rather, uh, leave the salah for that period when you are used to having a period and then make ghusl 
once the period is finished and then go ahead and pray. So the ghusl for the woman who is experiencing istihada is at the, when the menstruation blood finishes. As for the other blood, she can just make wudu and she can go ahead and pray with that. And the Imam, he says, وَتَغْسِلُوا فَرْجَهَا She washes her private area. We're talking about not the one who's experiencing menstruation. The other one, the istihada, mustahada. Right? وَتَعْصِبَهَا وَتَعْصِبَهُ So she makes the ghusl and she protects her private part, makes wudu, goes ahead and pray. Tayyib. And then she makes wudu for every prayer and she goes ahead and prays whether it's uh, obligatory or sunnah prayers, right? She makes the wudu for the obligatory prayer and then she can pray that which is underneath it. Uh, underneath it. And she has to repeat the wudu for the next salah unless the blood stops. If the blood stops, then she doesn't have to make wudu again. Her earlier wudu suffices it, right? Her earlier will do suffices. I think we'll stop here, inshallah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, please go back and review so we can continue upon a decent foundation next week when we complete the lesson for next week, inshallah. If you have any clarifications, questions, feel free, inshallah. Just a quick question, a few questions for review. So if you could close your books, if you have your books, just to try and review. Uh, first question, a person, he makes tayammum and later on he finds that actually he had water in the vicinity. He was under the assumption that he didn't have water. What's his situation? What does he have to do? In this situation, he has to repeat because he forgot. Okay, it's not a situation where the reality was that there was no water. Okay, the tayammum is made when there's a reality of no water being available. Okay, so somebody who did tayammum, second question. But he didn't follow the tartib. He didn't follow the order of the tayammum. What do we say about his tayammum? What's the hukum? Good, good. The brother is saying it's valid because there's no sequence required in tayammum, but that's only half of the answer. What's the other half of the answer? This is in the case of the one who is making tayammum for raf al hadith al asghar, for the removing of the hadith al asghar. But if it's for the hadith al akbar, then he doesn't need to have tartib. Or muwalat, okay? This is what we said, like in the ghusl. Somebody made tayammum, but he made two strikes with his hands instead of one. What's his situation? What's the hukum? What did the imam say? The imam, he said, there's... It's okay. Exactly. So the sunnah is one. So it's what they say, khilaf al-awla. It's going against that which is better, but it's okay. Because there are other opinions in other madhahib and amongst other scholars that you can do it more than once. A person is praying, having made tayammum. Before he finishes the salah, water is brought to him. What does he have to do? He has to start over again, okay? A person had made tayammum and he prayed the salah. He's finished the salah. Water is brought to him. What does he have to do? Here there's nothing upon him, right? Because he looked for the water in his vicinity. He couldn't find the water. He made tayammum and he prayed. Water was brought to him after he finished the prayer. After finishing the prayer, there's ijma that there's nothing upon the person. Tayyib. A person made tayammum for Maghrib, but he made this tayammum after Salat al Asr. He prayed Salat al Asr one hour after, which is like half an hour before Maghrib. He made tayammum. What's his ruling? Yes, he needs to make another tayammum, right? Why? Exactly. So the prayer time is a shart for tayammum to enter. Why? Because it's mubih. Remember, we said there's two situations one is rafi'. Opinion that tayammum is a complete replacement for wudu or ghusl. The other one is that it's mubih, which is that it's only permitting. So if it's only permitting, you can only permit it in that particular time for that act of worship. So it's permitting at the time of the prayer, not before it. Tayyib. So that tayammum is not valid unless he made it at the time of the prayer. The person made a tayammum for praying salat al-nafl. After he's finished the nafl, comes in the time for an obligatory prayer, what does he have to do? He has to do tayammum again, why? Exactly, so if you made the niyyah only for the nafal, then that's what the niyyah is for. But if you made the niyyah for an obligatory prayer, then you can pray the obligatory as well as the nafal with it. Okay, so it depends what you made the niyyah for. If you made the niyyah for the higher prayer, which is the obligatory prayer, you can pray that which comes underneath it. But if you made the niyyah for the lower prayer, which is the nafal, the sunnah, you cannot go up and pray with that same niyyah, that same intention, 
the obligatory prayer. So the tayammum has to be done again in that situation. A person may tayammum, but there was no dust on his hands. What's the ruling? I sent one of the conditions is to have ghubar, to have dust, according to the imam and those who agree with him. This person made the tayammum, and he continued with the tayammum for the next prayer. But we say to him, it's okay. He's musafir and he combined the prayers in the later time. Jam, jam ta'khir. Okay, he combined Maghrib with Isha. So his tayammum for Maghrib suffices him for the one with Isha because it's one time. In the joining, it becomes one time. Taib, the person has water enough to cover two-thirds of his wudu. What, what's his situation? What does he have to do? He should, he must, okay, very good, Jazakallah khair. He must do the wudu as much as he can with the water and then make tayammum. Why? Ascent. The condition of the absence of water has to be there. So he has to use the water as much as he can and then he will make tayammum for that which he missed out, okay?